It's not always easy being the sibling of a world famous celebrity and having to carve out a life for yourself in the shadow of a family member who's much more popular than you. But sometimes there are people that make it look easy, like Beyonce's sister Solange Knowles. Even with two world famous musicians in the family, if you count Jay-Z, which Solange might not, this talented woman has managed to create a respectable and critically acclaimed career for herself in music while also ensuring that she has a richly fulfilling home life as well. After moving to New York City in the early 2010s, Solange didn't choose Manhattan as the place to settle down like her sister did. Instead, she took up residence in the much hipper district of Brooklyn, where she resided in the eclectic neighborhood known as Carroll Gardens. Soon after making the move, Solange invited the folks over at Ellen to her home to show off her brownstone, making it clear from the very start that the most important thing about home decor is striking the right balance. She told them, with my house, I wanted to find a balance of having great colors and patterns, but also a really livable, warm, serene space. To create that, Solange installed white bedding accompanied by white walls in the bedrooms to create as serene a feeling as possible. Warmth was added with hardwood flooring, embroidered pillows, and Moroccan rugs. As for the art on her walls, Solange traveled to local exhibitions to find affordable pieces, while also importing a few of her favorite pieces she had picked up while living in her original home state of Texas. Here's the thing though, despite how nice the place is, Solange doesn't spend all that much time here. It's not clear if she ever sold the place, though considering I can't seem to find a listing, I'm assuming she hasn't. But instead of living life primarily on the East Coast, Solange has spent the better part of the past few years based out of Los Angeles. Back in 2008, Solange Knowles moved to Los Angeles, California, to pursue a career in the music industry when she was just 19 years old. At the time, she found a two-story dwelling with 1,360 square feet of space, boasting one bedroom, as well as a one and a half baths for an undisclosed amount. Situated right next to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, this building was originally constructed in 1929 in the Art Deco style. And from the very moment Solange first laid eyes on it, she knew she had to live there. She told Departamento, No matter where I've gone or moved, no matter the friends or relationships that have come in or out of my life, this loft has always been a place of home. It's been one of the most constant grounding things in my life. Shortly after moving in, Knowles custom tailored this incredible space to suit her own personal tastes, complete with art from some of the world's most talented black artists, as well as collectibles that she's collected from years of traveling around the globe. During her time here, Solange decorated the open plan living space with an extensive collection of stylish pieces, like a curling brown couch. When it came to her furniture, Knowles wanted to curate an accessible space that made her feel good while also being practical. She said, I wanted to use velvet, a material that was durable and tactile enough to live in, spill things on, draw on, not too precious, but still having a little bit of luxness that just makes you feel good. And that color brown has been a constant in my work, embodying the idea of living among the soil and the land. In a very subtle sort of way, Knowles used the interior design of her loft to connect her interests with her family lineage and history. For example, Solange was conceived in Egypt, which is why several tables and lamps in the loft reflect her interest in geometry and pyramids. Moving upstairs with the help of the loft's angular black staircase, you'll discover a modern master suite that boasts views of the famous Capitol Records building, as well as an ensuite bathroom equipped with a decadent Japanese soaking tub accessed by four very tall concrete steps. This spot had to be perfect for Solange for one very important reason. The bathroom is where she gets most of her work done. She told Departamento, I do most of my writing, conception, and ideation for performance and installations in the bathtub. Well, beyond those personal favorite spaces, Solange's home includes a dining area and kitchen outfitted with striking stainless steel Viking appliances. There's also a small office that can be used as a guest bedroom, and the building features amenities like 24-hour security, while also being protected by the Mills Act, which lowers the property taxes in exchange for the restoration and preservation of historic structures. The home also comes complete with polished concrete floors and high exposed beam ceilings, along with access to a shared rooftop that offers views of 
the iconic Hollywood sign. So is it any wonder that Solange held onto this home for so long? It was just last April that she finally decided to list the unit, asking for $799,000. Two weeks later, the property was purchased by an out-of-state buyer for $725,000. While the new owner was apparently looking for a smaller property, Solange's aesthetic choices actually won them over. But that wasn't the only property that Solange both listed and sold in the span of the past few months. The other home that Solange Knowles recently listed was a New Orleans church that she bought to serve as a headquarters for St. Heron, the creative art studio that she runs. Solange bought this piece of property back in 2018 for $850,000 from First Christian Church. The origin of this stone building dates back to the 1840s, and inside, it boasts over 7,500 square feet with white walls, dark hardwood floors, soaring ceilings, as well as arched windows. The airy congregation space with 18 foot tall ceilings would have been the perfect spot to set up a creative hub. Unfortunately, things didn't work out that way. One year after buying the property, Solange's neighbors were already complaining of loud noise and a municipal inspector found the church had been turned into a recording studio, which violated its residential zoning restrictions. Records also show two citations for illegal use and more in 2022 for insufficient maintenance and demolition by neglect. The permit was then issued in October for repairs to the building. Around that same time, Solange determined that maybe this wasn't the best spot to form an art collective after all. She then listed the property in March 2023 for $950,000. Within a few weeks, the buyer had been secured as a building contractor based of California became the new owner. According to New Orleans official website, Solange will continue to call the city home, living in yet another apartment she owns in the French Quarter of the city. A two-story Creole cottage situated in the Bywater, Noel's New Orleans residence is painted a deep yellow with black trim and black shutters. The story goes that Solange fell in love with the house at first sight. So much so, she wrote the home's owner a note saying that she couldn't wait to feel the house's aura and being. Inside, the floors are a bare wood. The walls are painted in cheerful contrast to the ceilings, which is a New Orleans tradition to help deal with insects. There's also an old-fashioned porcelain sink in her kitchen, as well as claw foot bathtubs in all of the bathrooms. It might not be as luxurious as her former home in LA or even as chic as the one she keeps in Brooklyn, but it still sounds like Solange Knowles will be spending a lot more time at this address in the near future. There's also no denying that it's every bit as much of an expression of her aesthetic tastes as anywhere else she's lived. All right, folks, that's gonna bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching and before you head out consider answering the following question what's the one decorative piece in your home that best summarizes your aesthetic taste let me know about some of your decor in the comments down below otherwise like subscribe and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode my name's Kara and if you feel like going on a whole other tour then stay tuned because I'm about to show you guys inside the homes of Jay-Z and Beyonce we're even gonna look at that 200 million dollar home they just bought. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye! In recent news, power couple Jay-Z and Beyonce have just bought the most expensive home ever sold in the state of California, paying $200 million for their new property in Malibu. The 40,000 square foot mansion is considered an architectural masterpiece designed by famous Japanese architect Tadeo Ando. The minimalistic concrete abode took over a decade to build and sits on eight acres overlooking the ocean in the exclusive Paradise Cove area. Also known as Billionaire's Row. This may seem insane to most of us average folks, but it seems Beyonce and Jay-Z only go big or go home when it comes to their real estate portfolio. The only other LA area home they've purchased was their main residence back in 2017, which cost them $88 million, and they further invested millions of dollars more into upgrades and renovations, pushed that home's value to over $100 million. Jay-Z and Beyonce have just purchased one of the greatest architectural masterpiece 
properties in the country. But it came far from cheap, costing the couple a whopping $200 million. With this recent purchase, they've shattered California's records as it marks the most expensive home ever sold in the entire state, and also the second most expensive real estate buy in the country, only being surpassed by $238 million for an NYC apartment. Jay-Z and Beyonce's new concrete compound is located in what's possibly the most prime area of Malibu, overlooking the ocean in Paradise Cove, aka Billionaire's Row. In fact, one of their neighbors, billionaire venture capitalist Mark Anderson, was the former record holder for most pricey home in California, who had bought the mansion right next door in 2021 for $177 million. Beyonce and Jay-Z's minimalistic mansion is a work of art, dreamt up by art collector William Bell, who purchased the property in 2003 for $14.5 million and called in famous Japanese architect Tadeo Ando to design the place. Ando is a Pritzker Prize winner who's known for creating impressive concrete structures across Asia, Europe, and North America. You also may have heard his name because Ando is also responsible for designing the home Kanye West bought in Malibu. Jay-Z and Beyonce's modern marvel of a home took nearly 15 years to create and it's made of nearly all concrete and glass. Ando's style is clearly noticeable here as the L-shaped mansion opens up to sprawling open spaces and is marked by concrete hallways and floor to ceiling walls of glass. Not only is the home in the most exclusive area of Malibu, it also sits on a stunning eight acre bluff overlooking the Pacific Ocean. The couple's mega mansion covers nearly 40,000 square feet of space and reportedly also used 7,645 cubic yards of concrete to build, according to the contractor involved, Morley Construction Co. According to the construction company, the home also features Bell's private art collection and other design features, including a water feature and a jaw-dropping swimming pool. Photos are still slim at this point since the mansion was never on the open market, and Jay-Z and Beyonce were one of the select group of buyers the pad was shown to. Considering the property was originally offered at $295 million as a pocket listing, the couple scored a deal. I mean, if you want to call it that. Out back on the grounds, the home's patios lead to the swimming pool as well as the cabana and grassy lawn that overlooks the beach below. Rumors of this unique property have been going around for years online, with Reddit users comparing its monolithic type design to that of a supervillain's lair. Well, now it's Beyonce and Jay-Z's lair. It also looks like the couple has a type when it comes to real estate, considering their other massive home purchase, which they paid $88 million for back in 2017, is a similar looking mansion located in Bel Air. They further invested millions more into this property, which is made up of six structures, pushing its value to over a hundred million. So let's take a look at that place next. It took Jay-Z and Beyonce years to find their main residence. In 2014, the couple lost out on a $70 million Beverly Hills mansion, being outbid by the creator of Minecraft, Marcus Person, and later they lost out on another nearby mansion. But finally, in summer of 2017, the power couple would score their current residence, a contemporary style spec-built Bel Air mansion. While the asking price was at a whopping $120 million, the couple was able to snag it for $88 million, which at this point is looking like a discount and especially when you compare it to the Malibu home they just bought. The 1.88 acre trophy property actually included a 9,000 square foot colonial revival mansion when it was last purchased in 2013. But this was immediately torn down and replaced with the uber modern estate that sits in its place. Jay-Z and Beyonce's house is more like a compound, encompassing six buildings, multiple pools, separate staff quarters, and plenty more outdoor features. Altogether, the structures make up a combined 30,000 square feet of living space or so, and the estate is a smart home equipped with all of the latest tech features. All it takes is a push of a button to open the glass walls. Safety isn't an issue here either with features like bulletproof windows and the entire place is situated behind massive iron gates. While the mansion was stacked with everything you could need and more, reportedly the couple spent millions more over the years on changes like adding a backup generator and another living area under the many pools. Located near Bel Air's East Gate, Beyonce and Jay-Z's home is in a posh neighborhood and there are eight bedrooms and 11 bathrooms throughout. 
Aerial views show how large and impressive it is. And we can see the backyard is divided into different levels. A level right off of the home has an infinity pool and plenty of green space, while the one below you can access by travertine tiled stairs. Up on the roof, you'll find one of the pools, which probably has the best view of all, and it said the huge white space at the top is a helipad. It's said that the architect of the home, Paul McLean, loves long, skinny pools like these ones. And we can see that especially in the pool on the second level. The boutique hotel-sized home offers panoramic city views, and inside, the multiple floors are linked together with an amazing circular staircase lined with buttery soft leather. In fact, the sculptural staircase was allegedly carved using a single piece of wood before being lined with dark brown leather, while the steps are made of limestone. Automatic glass walls through the home open up to reveal over 10,000 square feet of outdoor living space and terraces too for the ultimate indoor-outdoor vibe. You wouldn't expect Bay and Jay to have anything but the best in their kitchen. While the home was under construction, the builder installed top-of-the-line appliances. We can see there are two large islands that were custom-made in Italy. The nearby living room has a wall-sized marble fireplace and, of course, that floor-to-ceiling glass with killer views. In terms of the dining room, British Vogue's editor-in-chief Edward Ennefel had the privilege of joining Beyonce for dinner once at the home. Writing in the July 2022 issue of his rare encounter around the superstar's dining table, he wrote, I'm a little stunned at how relaxed it all is, going on to share that her home was impressively minimalist with acres of white walls, gleaming glass, and beautiful art. A luxe bathroom on an upper level of the mansion has views right into the trees, as well as a massive soaking tub perfect for the couple to unwind in a separate shower. The bathrooms are definitely high-end, many with Calcutta marble floors and limestone sinks. This bathroom has a tankless toilet that's environmentally friendly, while all of the walls-mounted toilets in their home can be opened, closed, and flushed without touching them. Looking at Jay-Z and Beyonce's media room or home theater, it has all of the best AV equipment with plush furnishings to unwind while enjoying the show. There's recessed lighting, a massive screen, and a door that's rumored to be covered in lizard skin, but that sounds kind of mean and I'm not into that. While we can see photos of a sprawling room referred to as the master suite, we can assume the couple has switched up this space since moving in. There's a wall-mounted electric fireplace and, of course, some more retractable glass walls leading to the private terrace. Additional features in the mansion include a library office, space for a recording studio, and a spa fitness suite with gym, hot tub, sauna, and his and her steam rooms. The amenities continue out on the grounds with a basketball court, a garage space for up to 15 cars, separate staff quarters, and those four pools. Beyonce is given glimpses of their epic palace on Instagram, including the backyard. We can see the clean aesthetic with black marble walls and neutral colored stone floors. While the mansion has a formal sitting room, the couple also has a family room that's more laid back with mahogany hardwood floors, an abstract rug, and a fireplace. Elsewhere, of course, Beyonce also has a stunning walk-in wardrobe to keep all of her designer looks. She's even shared a look inside her wardrobe while getting ready for red carpet events. It's decked out with wooden floors, cream walls, as well as a huge floor-to-ceiling mirror framed with warm light bulbs. The pristine dressing room also features a cream velvet sofa at the other side, as well as floor-to-ceiling windows. Since moving in, the couple has also filled their home with art that reflects their style and personality. Now that we've checked out the homes of Jay-Z and Beyonce, including the new $200 million home they bought in Malibu, that's gonna wrap up this house tour. Before we go, answer this for me. Would you ever wanna live in a super minimalistic concrete home like these ones? Why or why not? You let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and if you would like to check out another tour before you go, 